If you're trying to create solid backgrounds with your art, one of the obvious suggestions that often comes up is to use 3D. Now there's a number of ways you can do this. You could obviously create the entire background with 3D. You could use it as a base to draw over and the degree to which that base that you draw over is detailed is completely up to you. You can create a fully living, breathing 3D model or you can just sort of hack together a few boxes and it will at least help you to set the perspective. There's lots of options and ideas here that I think are really, really important to understand. Now, this is part of a larger series that I have on the channel about drawing backgrounds. And I'm focusing on what I tend to do, which is illustration, concept design, and comic books. And this series really focuses on how to kind of conceptually think about your backgrounds and actually execute them as well. In the previous episodes, I've talked about some of the higher level thought processes that you need to have when you're creating backgrounds. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about 3D. In the last video, we actually discussed floor plans and it'll be interesting to see how the ideas of 3D and the concepts from the previous video really start to mesh together. Even though this is framed as an easy solution, just use 3D. And I think that it is pretty easy to get into. 3D is more accessible than it ever has been. Computers are more able to run 3D programs now than they have been in the past. And there are a lot of really cool, easy, free options that you can dive into that have a lot of great resources and tutorials. The software that I'm using at the moment is Blender, which is free and open source. And you can find heaps of other tutorials on how to use it here on YouTube. However, it is actually a big challenge to figure out how to properly integrate 3D into your workflow. There's many gaps that you have to fill in terms of conceptually figuring out, okay, I have my thing in 3D, but how does that actually help me to draw the thing I want to do to create my concept art? Where are the strengths of 3D? Where are the weaknesses of 3D? And especially if you are creating a style that involves a lot of drawing, again, where does the 3D start and where does the 3D stop? If you've ever actually tried to just draw over some 3D and you think it's easy, often what I find is the students really trip up over this. It can be very, very challenging if you don't actually know the perspective in the beginning to just kind of magically allow the 3D to help you to draw better. It doesn't work that way. It's a lot more complicated. Now I've had a pretty wide variety of experiences with 3D throughout my career. And in this video, I just wanna share with you how I tend to use it and share with you a few tips and easy pieces of advice so that hopefully you can figure out how to use 3D in your illustrations, concept art, comics, etc., and you know really make it work with your style. Anyway, this should be a fun one. So let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now I'm gonna cover how I use 3D in my comics day to day, which is very much in the line and color style. But I've also actually used 3D to try and get fairly sort of realistic, you know, game level concept art images and really, really polished illustrations out. I've built some of these things and really a lot of the concepts that I'm gonna talk about are gonna relate to how you kind of use 3D across the board. So that's my sort of goal here. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about sort of illustration and picture making, which I think is gonna be a big part of this uh, particular episode, then you can check out my free illustration mini workshop. It's sort of uh, describes my journey as an illustrator, as someone who went from really sucking at drawing to becoming a professional artist, making a career out of this. And it goes over what I think are, you know, some of the key concepts that you need to deal with, such as getting more polish and detail in your work, how to think about composition, and also, you know, how to start conceiving of how to get professional work, how to start thinking about that. Anyway, it's free. The link will be in the description. Go check it out if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so before we dive into the nuts and bolts of this, I just want to sort of share a little bit of my own journey because I'm someone who really started trying to become a professional artist when 3D was coming onto the scene in a big way. I think that I, you know, started using 3D programs about, you know, sort of early 2000s, late 90s, and I was using 3D Studio Max, probably 2.0. 
five, and I kind of figured out the basics of sort of poly modeling using NURBS and just kind of trying to make stuff in 3D. I think that having that stuff in my folio, even though it was not really production ready, was a big thing that kind of helped me get a job in video games really, really early on. Now, as my career progressed, 3D became a much, much larger part of the production process, especially in concept art. And to a certain degree, a huge swathes of the concept art industry has moved to, you know, really 90% 3D in terms of creating assets and actually kind of, you know, what people spend most of their time doing. I have done a fair bit of that, and even though in some cases I have done this, you know, really by using it as a base to create, um, you know, solid designs on top of with my line work, um, as I said before, I've also spent a lot of time actually really building that 3D model out, lighting it, and, you know, creating a little scene within the 3D program that I kind of slap a little bit of paint on, but most of it is kind of built in 3D. And I've also, you know, through the process of learning how to do all these things as a concept artist, even though, again, I use these fairly minimally compared to a lot of other artists, I've been able to kind of use it in a couple of really interesting ways in my comic work. And more specifically, what we're talking about in this video, in my backgrounds. And that's really what I want to dig into is kind of how we utilize it in the backgrounds. But kind of before we do that, I want to sort of just share with you some of these ideas about how 3D is used um, across the board um, by different artists, because I think that'll help contextualize maybe some of the advice you get overall, right? Because I think it's important to understand that, look, there's many, many ways you can use 3D in your work and a lot of it is up to you and your creative process and what you think is important and the kind of end result that you want with your imagery. If you want to get good at 3D, I think that the thing you need to really understand is that it is not going to make up for a lack of drawing knowledge or foundational principles. It's not going to magically allow you to do something that you kind of couldn't do before the 3D was implemented in your workflow. In most cases, there are a lot of artists who really have built 3D as a major sort of structural element of their entire process. And they spend the majority of their day in 3D programs, building um, ships and other things for concept art, environments. And I think in that case, again, if you really commit your entire pipeline and workflow to 3D, Obviously, it's going to play a huge part and your sort of need and ability to understand, you know, drawing and some of those other sort of concepts might be lessened. But even so, what you'll find is most of the people who are really, really good at utilizing 3D, um, you know, understand the fundamentals of perspective and drawing and composition and a lot of these real sort of core concepts that, you know, all artists share. If we look at the top level of how I think it is ultimately best used for someone who is, you know, like me, sort of mostly drawing, mostly 2D, mostly painting, and you're using 3D as a way to support your, you know, endeavors. I think that the main things that it does really, really well is that in a design process, it allows you to, you know, create a base that is three dimensional. So it's really good if you need to design something and then redraw that same thing from multiple angles as part of the design process, especially because in concept art, you often have to iteratively redesign that thing and having to repaint something or you know, get through a design process where you draw it from this angle and this angle and, you know, you get it all looking good. And then someone will say, hey, we just need an angle from this position rendered up. So it's really good if you need to draw the same thing again and again and again from different angles. It's also really good at solving basic perspective problems early on. Okay, so now I wanna dive into Photoshop and I'll just show you a few different projects that are very different. Not all of these are gonna relate directly to backgrounds. We'll get to backgrounds as we progress, but this should just give you an idea of how I've used 3D and you know, I'll sort of relate this to how I think it's often used throughout the industry. All right, so this is a spaceship design that I created for a game that ended up being called From Other Suns. I was working with Gunfire Games. They're the same um, development studio that created uh, Remnant, Remnant 2, and a bunch of other really, really good games. An excellent team. I had a really, really good time working with them. And this is a good example. This is the finished sort of illustration that was, I guess, used to base the sort of finished product, the finished model off of. And here you can see 
what I have is, is a finished 2D drawing, right? This is the line and color style. Essentially, what I've got is just a bunch of really simple lines. Again, they're kind of done in that, you know, sort of concept designy industrial design style, not super polished, but again, you know, trying to get, uh, you know, an idea for the detail that's going to be there and figuring out most of the major forms. Now, 3D for me was really useful here because it allowed me to create a very simple version of this. And I used SketchUp back in those days. I think this was around 2014, 2015. So I was using SketchUp. And again, there's a variety of reasons that this kind of really kind of helps um, me as an artist, right? Um, one was that as a design task, I was actually given the interior of the ship in 3d that i had to kind of build around so again it was a huge help to be able to model it up in 3d and what i kind of end up doing is using these kind of renders from the 3d to create this finished drawing and where i have like a little bit of extra detail this is also where it's really useful i can just kind of take a shot of the model and then take it into photoshop and draw over it wherever i kind of need detail so very, very practical application. But let's look at how 3D is not just used for a drawing aid in the finished product, it's also used in the design process of this ship. So for me, I often just start with drawing and this is where the drawing is gonna help no matter what because it's a really easy way to ideate and create sketches. But this is what these sketches look like. I think these were basically just done on paper really quickly, taken into Photoshop and given basically a thumbnail treatment. But this is often the first stage. Again, every artist is different, but this is how I work in the beginning. Now, even though that's often how I get the ideas started and we kind of start the conversation, I have often used, and on this particular ship I did use 3D as part of the ideation process as well. This is where I essentially sort of kit bashed a bunch of little shapes together and just modified the same idea to you know, see how we could create some shape variation. And this essentially is just combining very, very simple forms together, moving them around. My knowledge of 3D is very, very poor these days and back then was even worse. So I was really just playing around and trying to get it. But 3D is really good because you're able to rotate the camera and really see what these things look like when they're actually kind of moving. Because that is often what we're trying to design is a 3D ship that you see in a video game engine, not necessarily a drawing. What I would often do is then take those sort of shapes that seem to work and give some variety and then i kind of add a little bit more detail as a pass now this is where again having the 3d allows me to focus a little bit more on the shape breakup and some of those you know secondary forms a little bit more of the design and again allows me to sort of pump out this phase a little bit better but i know they're all going to look but also more importantly i know that I'm actually going to be able to take that design if it's chosen and move it on to the next phase pretty well. I know that the drawing actually works in 3D. So from there, what I would do is basically refine the 3D model a little bit. We had a very basic 3D model. And then once I kind of done a little bit of sort of drawing over it and we figure out which one, then I, you know, just take that and play around with the 3D model a bit, you know, rotate it in three dimensional space, make sure it all kind of, you know, just sort of collides well, the shapes are consistent, we don't get any weird shapes as it rotates. And then I kind of did more of a complete design pass over the top, right, where I really kind of figure out, hey, what do all these things look like from different angles? Um, so we have some top down angles here, zoom out a bit. Yeah, I've got some top down angles just doing very, very simple graphic design. And here I've got the same thing in 3D. So you can see these are very rough at this stage, but we're basically just trying to refine this. And this is exactly where 3D can come in really handy. I need to draw the same thing again and again and again. I'm sort of designing some actual thing that needs to be in 3D. And it's just so much easier to focus on the design tasks at hand if I'm not having to draw this thing, you know, every single time from different angles. But Again, the idea is I could if I wanted to, it would just take more time and waste the client's money. And honestly, it's not much fun really anyway. All right, and I guess the final step is what you saw in the beginning, this image. This is where I'm just polishing it, trying to give it another pass. Again, this is a fairly stylized game. I'm not going for a hyper-realistic uh, level of detail with a million little greeblies everywhere. A slightly different approach, slightly different style, but at least this way I can hand this to the next stage of production 
and I know that my drawings are based off some sort of simple proportion that I know when we rotate will kind of keep its shape consistency and an and, and iconic um, nature. And what I do is I give my absolutely abysmal, terrible SketchUp 3D model, uh, model to the, the actual kind of next stage of production. And they can use that as a base to start with from proportion. And, and that kind of just speeds everything along. So again, this is a good example of how I have used 3D. It's not for a background, but I think ultimately this is, you know, the primary way that 3D is actually useful, um, you know, is, is in making something you're doing a little bit easier little bit more fun, allows you to focus on the finished product more and make it better, save everyone's time and make sure again, you don't get into any kind of trouble where you design something that doesn't actually work in 3D. All right, and this is another example. So this is taking a different approach, utilizing the 3D um, much more and really trying to, you know, make it do all of the heavy lifting. So this is a finished model of the Two for Feist, which is a ship I designed for the game Star Atlas. And this one, again, you know, I took it a lot further, probably not as far as some other artists might. Um, a lot of people would probably push the 3D even further. But you can see here that, again, the 3D is not just giving me like perspective. It's also potentially giving me lighting and some texture. And I've tried to really, you know, design in a lot of these issues that I'm going to have to deal with in the finished illustration, which is kind of like, how does this rock kind of, you know, mix with the ship? There's a lot of these issues here. Now, obviously, this is the end point of a larger design process, however. Now, this particular computer doesn't run Blender that well, and that model kind of got a little bit unwieldy. But here's an example of how I kind of utilized that model to create a 3D scene that I'm then going to paint over you can see that I've utilized that basically to create my scene. I tried to do it all in 3D, and this is essentially just a render that, you know, look, it's not very fancy, but I'm gonna be able to use it in the next stage to kind of create something that is a lot more polished. And here we are, this is one of the finished illustrations for the ship. Now, the reason that this level of 3D from my experience and the way I see it being used by other artists who are a lot more advanced than I am with 3D on the Star Atlas game, and there's a huge variety of really, really talented artists that you know I sort of work with day to day who do this, uh, you know, high level concept design. The reason that it's useful, obviously, is that I can sort of design something and then I can not just create one illustration, I can create two or three or four or 20, and it'll always pretty much look good, right? It'll look consistent. It's obviously the same ship. And this is really how you start to prototype and get that design process to the next level. This is the only way that, you know, you see these kind of really, really high end ship designs, even being able to create, even being able to be created in the first place. So here we can see another illustration, different angle, different idea. These are all actually based on thumbnails, by the way. So again, I drew out kind of, you know, what I wanted to do. And then I sort of modeled that thing um, as a scene, you know, I mocked it up as a scene in Blender hit render and then again I was able to create another version of the ship from a different angle obviously there's a lot of paint here that's sort of my strength um you know but you know this is just not possible right for me to redraw this ship this many times this quickly and get this many highly polished illustrations out um and you know have them all look professional and here's one more you can see the asteroid ship the two for feist kind of waiting for these you know other transports or you know sort of some other ship and essentially the idea is they're going to kind of spring to life and that's part of what we're trying to tell with these illustrations show the product, show the thing we're designing in situ, you know, what might it actually look like in game? How can we tell that story? Does it look cool? You know, when we kind of actually put it in there, you know, does it look good? It's one thing to create a little sketch of something, but again, being able to do this and again, what other more advanced 3D artists do is really key to actually designing something that you know is going to have the proper effect in the game. If you want to have a look at the, you know, pretty rough 3D that was, you know, at the base of that, here you can see it. Here's the um, sort of ambush image where we can see the 3D. And again, if you kind of zoom in, you can see, yeah, you know, we've done a lot of lighting for free. I can kind of just paint over this and all I have to do is basically make it look better, make it look less like sort of a cheap 3 model, more like something that, again, maybe not you would see in game because I'm a bit more of a painter, but again, something that has more emotion. Here we can see the 3D block in for this particular image. And again, same kind of thing. 
if we zoom in, you can see that things that I'm getting here are, you know, a really good indication of how light might actually fall across this form, which is actually really useful. I kind of get that for free with the 3D. I also get a good indication of, you know, all these details and, you know, that just helps me with the painting process. Here's another shot of the 3D model. And this is one that we used again, more in that design phase, but this ship obviously had more of a history. There was a design process that we used to get there. And we also needed to, or at least I needed to design the interior and figure out what that looked like. And again, 3D makes this a lot easier and makes it a lot easier to focus on the actual design tasks without worrying that, you know, your interior is actually gonna fit into your ship and a million other problems. I think that often are actually real concerns when you're designing a ship that a player is actually gonna be able to open up and get into in game. Here's a quick example of the 3D interior and an example of how I essentially draw over that and add a fair amount of detail to really flesh out the space and, you know, figure out what's going to be there. And once that's done, then we can kind of make it look a little bit prettier and think about what a ship might be like if it had living rock aliens inside. If we zoom up, you can see I've tried to, you know, solve a bunch of the basic design challenges that are going to be there, which is we might need a little crew area. So we've got a place for people to sit down, lots of storage bays and places to put things. We've obviously got an idea for where the engine is and you know how that engine connects to the kind of exhaust ports and things that you see. We also have some sort of bunks or places people could sleep that might, you know, sort of, uh, I'd again, not official cannon, but might operate as well as like a little escape pod. And we've got some, you know, areas where people can do sort of control operations and the pilot seat. Now, sometimes these things need a little bit more development, a little bit more work. And that's where we might do another pass, a call out, create some, you know, detail and figure out like, hey, what does that pilot seat actually look like, um, you know, with more detail on there? Although interestingly enough, I just drew this one, you know, because I couldn't be bothered doing the 3D. And then we can obviously use the same model, the same thing to create a, you know, much more sort of finished final render so that again, when someone actually makes this into a real ship and figures out most of the problems, which I haven't really figured out yet, they're going to be able to do a really, really good job because, you know, I've kind of been able to present a lot of the textural information, painting, and, you know, solve as many problems as I can at the concept design phase. All right, so you might be saying, hey, where are the backgrounds? This video is meant to be about backgrounds. Look, I just wanted to share this with you because I think it's like a pretty cool example of how, you know, I've used 3D in the past, shows you the range, what is and isn't possible. And I think it talks to how I think 3D is really good for being able to, you know, use it as a design process and draw things from different angles. And you see with some of those interior shots, again, that's getting close to, you know, the type of things that you'd need to do if you wanted to use it for your own backgrounds. And it's really exactly the same thing that I use in the comic, which is what I'll show you right now. So if you have read the Star Atlas core series of comics and they're free, you can get them on Apple Books and on the Play Star Atlas um, site. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, yeah, we, I think the seventh episode just dropped. Uh, there's, so, you know, you can read the first act, which is episodes one to six. So to check this out, um, again, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm saying about simple style and process and all of that stuff, you know, is really being displayed in that comic. It's a real sort of French clean line style, I'm really trying to simplify things, create like a fun, um, but again, you know, consistent, coherent science fiction world. So this is one of the big challenges is like, ah, oh, it's kind of a cartoony style, but the ships are really important for the game. And this comic is a prequel to the Star Atlas game. So... How do I kind of make those ships consistent? So you can see here is the main character Geon ship, which is a modified Calico Seeker. And it's sort of like a survey vessel. It's this big, really kind of, a, you know, classic, long, um, you know, sort of overly sort of phallic classic ship. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it was just something really, really basic, but it does sort of transform. It does a few sort of tricky things. And yeah, you can see that this ship is, you know, on page after page. And um, yeah, I've really tried to make sure that it looks, you know, pretty consistent across the board. And the way I did that is I built a really simple 3D model of it pretty um, early on. And that's why, again, you know, in all these drawings, no matter what angle I'm drawing up from, again, you know, um, I know that, you know, it's going to be consistent. And this design, although it's very simple to draw, is actually very challenging to get right from different angles. It's one of those things where... 
um, you know, when you're looking at it from front on, can be really challenging to kind of figure out what it should look like, especially when you change the, the camera field of view. So, um, yeah, you know, it's really, really helped me to just have this basic 3D model. Now, how basic? Um, this basic, right? This is about as basic as it gets. This is kind of the, the 3D model. And I think this shot is exactly the same kind of uh, asset that I used to do this drawing from. And essentially, mostly what I do is I just kind of take the 3D that you can see here and I do something really simple with Photoshop, which is I do filter, stylize, find edges, and that gives me a really simple version. Uh, Shift Control U will make that um, monotone. And then, yeah, what I kind of do is just sort of drag that onto my file, right? And, uh, you know, when I'm doing the sketch phase, like the drawing phase, I just kind of rotate that and get it in the right spot. And I kind of just add detail to that, right? And again, that's because I, you know, the drawing is giving me what I need. Uh, you know, I don't, I know what the details need to be on top of that. And yeah, it just kind of means that it's consistent across the board, right? In all these images, again, it looks pretty similar from, you know, the very first pages of the comic all the way to the end. And, uh, you know, even just in little shots like this, right, where it's just there, I'll still do a little 3D model. Why? Because, again, it just makes it easier and it's consistent. I think that this is a great mix between what the viewer wants, which is like <laughs> they want the ship to look the same every time. They don't really care about my drawing ability. I could draw it a few times. I drew it a few times. But, again, it's much easier and, and quicker for me to do it this way. It keeps it consistent. And I think, ultimately, it adds a level of realism and consistency to what is otherwise a really playful and cartoony style. Now, if we look here at what this looks like uh, within Blender, uh, yeah, you know, it's just like a... You know, it's just a bunch of really simple primitives. Um, you know, I don't think anyone would ever hire me to do 3D of any shape or form. I probably can do better 3D than this. I could probably model it properly. Um, you know, if you saw the two for Feist again, I could do it. But for this, I'm like, look, no one else sees this. No one else cares. It's only about what I need. So really, I'm just trying to do it in the quickest way possible and do it in a way where I can kind of move stuff around, get the shape right. And, uh, you know, probably, you know, as I said in the last video talking about floor plans, I probably will do a better 3D model of this one time and really kind of, you know, get it all working inside it out, figure out how all the stuff works. Um, but again, you know, everything you've seen previously, um, you know, the first, uh, you know, seven episodes has just been done with this really, really basic 3D model. And uh, how do I actually, you know, what's the workflow like? It looks exactly like this. I kind of look at my thumbnail sketch, which often has a really kind of um, rough, uh, you know, version of what it should look like. I'll get one of those for you now. So let's have a look at it. Um, yeah, this is the storyboard for that, um, you know, big sort of shot that you saw before with, you know, the yellow ship. And all I do is I kind of look at this and, uh, you know, I go into Blender and I kind of get it at the right angle. All right, we just sort of rotate it around. I kind of get it where I want. Um, adjust the field of view if I need, do some very basic things. And then all I do is in Windows, I just take a screenshot. Shift, Windows, create key S, and that gives you this little beauty. And I just take that and I just save it to, you know, uh, a thing and, you know, another folder. And then I just drag that into Photoshop. So I don't even do any rendering. It's super basic. It's brutal, right? Um, again, no one's going to give me credit for doing 3D, but... It works, it's functional, and this is how I do it. All right, next I wanna show you, you know, how I use it for backgrounds, really. Okay, so now we're on to backgrounds, for real. Um, this is a good example. And again, I wanna step through it because, you know, often it's a combination of these different things, and it's, it's the thinking of how you're actually gonna utilize the things that are important for the background that need to be consistent, and which things are gonna be easier to draw. So this is a good example. Here we have on the left is the thumbnail. So this is the rough sketch. This is not based on any 3D. This is just my kind of, you know, crummy little thumbnail perspective drawing. You can see that, look, I'm able to kind of get a pretty decent idea of like, look, what should this look like though? I've, I haven't quite understood the scale of the ship and how big it should be. But again, I've done a pretty good job here of kind of roughing it in. Now, the next stage is that I use some 3D to get to this stage, which is in the middle, the lines. And then obviously on the right, you can see the finished product. So this is what we are heading towards 
is a sort of finished illustration, um, establishing shot. We can see the ship there. It's got all these kind of little, um, you know, the Punab characters kind of crawling all over it, fixing it. Got all this sort of weird stuff. And that was in the sketch. But again, what I need to do is make sure that this is what the ship would actually look like. So what does the 3D look like for this? So I'll, I'll show that just now and you can see. So this is what it looks like. Um, I have the same ship that I showed you before and I put it in the scene and I've done a few things. I've got some perspective here that is going to become all of these, see here, make this bigger. Yeah, this is going to become all of these things up here, these like mechanical droids and um, extra bits that are part of the mechanic shop that are fixing the ship. And really all I've done is just try and, you know, make sure that, hey, this thing lines up here. And this is very much what I was talking about in the beginning where I know that just putting a few cylinders there is going to give me the perspective and I can trace those things back. And once I've got that, I can use, you know, my drawing knowledge to get everything else right. But look, everything's going to be consistent. And the main hero of the shot which is the ship, is going to carry across. Now, what else is important with 3D? Because this is where, again, I feel like you really get into the weeds. It becomes like, oh, what else should I do? Well, you could build all of this stuff, right? I could go crazy. But, you know, a lot of this might not actually need to be in the finished image. And a lot of these things, again, I just make up. This is a very detailed shot. I don't have that much time to draw this. So I'm kind of making up a lot of these details on the fly, to be um, quite honest, and exploring what they're going to look like. The ship kind of needs to look the same. It needs to be consistent. It's going to be there throughout the whole um, book. But everything else, look, we can maybe make it up. And the thing that probably I know I can't make up is the relationship of how big is the ship relative to the character. Um, and so what I've done is I have a ground plane and I put the characters there. I put some little spheres, which are kind of meant to represent how big the little sort of Punab characters are. And they've obviously got this um, sort of mech robot that platform that they walk around on. And then I've just placed some other characters in the background. And I kind of know where those are. And that gives me an idea for like, look, how if I draw a character in the background, how big are they? I'm not going to use the 3D model. I'm not going to use any of the 3D reference. It's just there for scale so that I know how the, you know, the top of the head and the bottom of the feet are from a proportional standpoint. And if you've watched any of my videos about drawing characters and proportion, you know that that's half the battle. Once I've got that, it all becomes pretty easy to kind of sketch around and put it all together. And that to me is so much of the beauty of 3D is sort of understanding exactly how to use it. All right. So what does that scene look like in Blender? This is what it looks like. It's the same ship. It's got a few little characters on the ground there. And really what I've done is, you know, fixed the camera where I need it to be and then just kind of placed a bunch of stuff, you know, so that it kind of lines up. It doesn't necessarily make sense, but again, all this stuff's going to go to the right vanishing point. And I know that I'm going to have some consistency between characters, right? Here's a character over here sitting under here. That's how big they're going to be. And uh, yeah, one of the things I realized is like, man, the ship is really big, um, you know, relative to how much space you actually get inside it. It's what happens when you, you know, you make something taper right to the edges. So again, this is all part of the design process, the, you know, figuring things out. Um, but yeah, for comics, this could be all you need. Speaking of all you need, here's another good example of me just using a cut down, really simple 3D block out to kind of just help me do some of the drawing, to kind of just figure out what the scale of these things should be. So what have I got here? Um, again, I've got a cylinder, a few squash cylinders. Uh, I've got a few boxes. These are my ships, guys. Look at this. This is some pro level 3D modeling right here, right? I got these guys floating around, right? Um, yeah, look, uh, how did this turn out? What did this end up as? Boom. So yeah, this is what it was. Ended up being the kind of main tower of this Mondra 7 space station. And, uh, you know, I, I think this just kind of really helped me to, you know, get the scale. I was trying to think about like, you know, what would that look like? Where would it be? And, you know, just doing that simple 3D block out didn't take me that long, but you know, it, it just made sure that a lot of those ellipses and things were, were really nicely sorted and saved me a bunch of time on that particular uh, image. Could I have drawn this? Yeah, probably. Um, but in this case, I didn't. All right, next up, I just want to show you a few instances where, look, you know, I could have used 3D again, but I didn't. The opposite of what we just saw here. 
So this is that kind of Mondra 7 space station and part of what we were meant to kind of see in that previous shot is some kind of scene here. This uh, is probably something I could have modeled in 3D but I didn't. And this is a good example of, you know, what the actual drawing looked like, let's say, the, the process. So a little bit of a technical drawing um, uh, sort of sketch here, um, lots of perspective lines, lots of, you know, working out construction. And, you know, this is what allowed me to just kind of draw this guy uh, without any 3D. Although, you know, building a 3D model for this is probably a good idea, probably something that I will do in the future. But... You know, often the first time I draw something, I like to just draw it by itself so I can focus on the design and, you know, really think about my natural process, which allows me to, you know, mix these th two things up, right? Yes, some technical drawing, but also some design. What's it going to look like? And, you know, I don't sort of get too stuck in the concept design realm, right? A little bit more illustration. So again, that's a, an example. And here's another example, right, of uh, this scene, which I think I showed in a previous uh, part of this uh, series on backgrounds and here you can see this is just done old school right so if we look at the the finished result here this is what that one ended up as and this is a full background it's a scene but you know I didn't end up modeling any of this uh, there's probably ways I could have done it but you know uh, often there are ways as I've spoken about in previous episodes again that you really want to focus on the two-dimensional graphic element right the iconography what's this story about and sometimes you know it's worthwhile maybe spending a little bit more time to figure out the 3d also this is very organic right so in some ways you know it can be easy to create organic shapes uh, with drawing and really sort of think about the flow there versus trying to do that in 3D at the beginning. So, you know, again, it's so much about what you want to do in the end and how you're going to leverage the tool. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, how do you do that, right? How does, what does the drawing look like? So I'll show you a few sort of, of the process steps, right? So you can see again, how I'm using the 3D, how I'm sort of building on top of it before I ink and, you know, all those things. Here's an example of what the sort of construction level of this drawing looked like before I added detail to it. So again, it was pretty detailed in terms of blocking out all of these shapes, really making sure that the primary forms are all gonna read, they're all in perspective. And then what I did at the end is just kind of add detail. And this is really a matter of something that I'll probably talk about in the next video or a following video, which is about how you just utilize simple iconic rule sets to you know create levels of complexity often the way you add detail to some sets of primary form is very very basic and i think this is a good example of that i'm just kind of doing the same thing over again um you know just repeating the same iconic uh, shapes and it's kind of working but yeah this is just all old school this particular page and there's no real reason for that other than that's kind of what i wanted to do all right one last example of stepping through the process so you can kind of see again how i'm using the 3d from a process standpoint here we have the thumbnail for this particular page and you can see that look the, the shot is pretty close which i was pretty happy about um, i mostly used it to just make things easier now, a lot of these other elements as well were, you know, pretty rough here at the you know, thumbnail phase. The, the way that, you know, this kind of intersects between thumbnail and finish is obviously that construction phase, which is the most important phase of drawing from, from my perspective, the most important thing you can really work on. So here is what that construction phase looked like. And here you can see the 3D being utilized and I'm using the same kind of technique I'm building those primary forms like, hey, here's this giant pillar here. I've got these kind of clamshell um, kind of cylindrical protrusions. I know they're in perspective, but, you know, this is roughly where they're going to be. I'm just building those primary forms as a construction drawing because what I'm adding is just that kind of secondary tertiary detail. And once the perspective's there, it's really just a matter of kind of adding that stuff to it. But, uh, you know, this is definitely important and I basically utilize as many tricks as possible. So here's another nasty little dirty trick where, you know, I think I've actually taken uh, a drawing of this little guy who's the Huracana, who's like a crime lord in the uh, story. And I've kind of just like shrunk it down and used it again, right? So 
pretty brutal in terms of how you know we need to kind of get these pages done i think that's very much part of the comics ethos is you know it's really just about trying to figure out look how can i put all of my time and you know get the most out of the finished result so that's kind of how we um dealt with this one all right again just go back this is the rough sort of construction phase and then I've sort of added that sort of finished level. So there's a fair gap with my process between like the 3D block in, again, taking that and kind of like figuring out, you know, how do I extrapolate from that? And then kind of adding a lot of detail with the lines. Again, that comes with a lot of experience. This is not necessarily gonna be your particular workflow. You may need to add a lot more drawing in between. But again, I'm just sharing with you how I do it because I think that's really important. Okay, so. What do we take away from that? There's a lot of information there. There's a lot of ideas. And again, a big part of this is just me sharing with you my experience of using 3D. I think, uh, you know, you might be, you know, wondering how much I use it, how do I use it? And, uh, you know, look, it can be tricky to know how to take all of that information and really kind of combine it into your particular workflow. I think the key here for me of, you know, learning it over the years is to make sure that it doesn't, sort of control my workflow. It doesn't control my process. You can see that what I've tried to develop is an ability to create the same image with 3D or without 3D. And I think that's really important just from a skills point of view. However, what you'll find is that if you do really start to master a lot of these different areas, and that could be that, look, you know, if you're starting your career now, you might want to really invest in, you know, putting a lot more detail into 3D and, you know, just figure out how to draw over these, those and, you know, use that for your backgrounds in a big way. I think that'll give you a really consistent result. Again, as long as you focus on what people care about, which is the finished product. And that has to look cool. You have to combine all the stuff we talked about in the previous episodes in terms of thinking iconically about the story, the narrative, what people care about. But 3D allows me personally to do things that otherwise I wouldn't be able to do. It's a really, really valuable tool. When I've sort of taught in university classroom environments, I know that one of the things we introduced as part of, you know, the, the fundamental boot camp was just like, look, four weeks of 3D. Uh, just teach people how to use the basics of, uh, you know, like Maya or Blender or whatever it would be. And, you know, a lot of people really find that once you kind of get over the boredom of it and the, the gray box attitude, all these 3D programs have really painful user interfaces if you're just starting out. Once you kind of figure out how to use it, you get over that hump, a lot of people really find it quite useful and, and they start to be, get creative with it. So I think that's the real key takeaway here is don't let it control your process. Make sure you're using it as a tool. It will allow you to do things that I think otherwise would be, you know, relatively impossible given, you know, a particular type of, uh, you know, sort of deadline or schedule. But uh, yeah, anyway, I think you should just jump in, you know, play around with it. I think there's a lot of people who are probably a lot better than me at showing you how to use a program like Blender or SketchUp for this stuff. Again, if you want, let me know in the comments. I'll do a little tutorial and show you how I use it. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty basic. I think that's all you need. And again, just understand it's one of the best tools out there today to help you solve a lot of problems. And, uh, you know, for me, I use it, you know, more and more these days, but in a pretty simple manner. I think that's probably all we've got time for on this one. It's probably gone longer than I imagined. Let me know if this was sort of interesting. Again, you know, I just wanted to share a lot of, you know, the examples because I think that stuff is interesting to see. Let me know if you found that interesting, whether you got any sort of follow-up questions. Again, whether you want a tutorial of me showing you how I do this uh, in Blender, you know, maybe I've messed, I've sort of left some stuff out. Let me know. Other than that, we will catch you around. Happy drawing.